All right. Well, good afternoon, Wednesday. It is the Audible. I'm Kim Bocamper. Joining me, well, nobody right now. But I, got, I guarantee you someone's going to roll in here and sit down. So I'm going to get you updated on everything that's going on with the Miami Dolphins today. Had a big practice out on the field. Big group of uh, Dolphin employees got the opportunity to come out and watch practice. Kind of a little payback for all the hard work they've done all during the offseason. We'll talk about that a little bit. And some moves by the Miami Dolphins today. Let me remind you, we are on the Audible. You can get your questions in via Facebook. Go ahead and send them in. I'll get to them as we go on through the program today. John Offord all is supposed to join me, a former line backer for the Miami Dolphins, one of my favorite players ever to put on the aqua and orange. So I'm looking forward to talking to John when he gets here. Also talk to him about Don Shula and the fine system for being late for a meeting. We'll talk to that. It's a little bit appropriate with John Offered all, but uh, he's got his business going on and all that stuff that he's dealing with. So, hey, look, we'll go ahead and give him a pass this time, but not next time. All right, let's get to some Dolphin news right off the bat. The Dolphins make a roster move today. They signed Chris Culliver. Uh, cornerback, formerly of the Washington Redskins, had an ACL injury last year. That made him available to the Miami Dolphins. Obviously, the Dolphins are trying to look at that cornerback position, find some depth, find some people in there they can count on. Chris Culliver is the next guy to step in. Jockeys McClendon, offensive lineman. He was released also. Last week, we talked about Danny Lanzana, the linebacker that came in from Tampa Bay. He's gone, making room for Culliver. So the Dolphins continue to reshape this roster. And I guarantee you they're going to do this throughout the course of the preseason, probably into the season, especially until they find that right mix. The biggest concern for me is that cornerback spot, making sure they got guys that are compatible with each other, guys that are big enough to go out and compete against some of the bigger receivers that we face, uh, the Sammy Watkins and those that ilk of players that they're going to have to deal with, Brandon Marshall, as the season rolls along. So the Dolphins will continue to shape their roster. They made a move today and uh, to get that going. So hopefully that gives them a guy, with a, a veteran guy, started a lot of games in this league, obviously coming off injury or he would not be available. He just signed a contract with the Washington Redskins, I believe, two years ago. So this is a guy that they coveted. Uh, the injury occurred, and now he's out. So here we go. But the Dolphins getting ready two days from today on Friday. They'll be up in, uh, in New Jersey at the Meadowlands MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Giants first preseason game for the Miami Dolphins. Interested to see what's going to happen with this game for the Dolphins with a new coach, Adam Gaze, and a new coaching staff. So many different changes in here as far as the coaching staff is concerned. This may not be the traditional first game of the preseason where the starters get only a short period of time. Now, that may be, a, that may be the story on the defensive front where Ndamukong Sue, uh, you look at Mario Williams, Cam Wake, some of those guys probably going to play a series and they're going to get out and sit on the pine and chew some uh, some sunflower seeds and, and watch the rest of the game while some of the other guys get in there. But don't be surprised if offensively you don't see Ryan Tannehill staying maybe a little bit longer. Uh, maybe some of the offensive linemen staying a little bit longer. Laramie Tunzel should get a big dose of work with the second unit and on throughout in this game so they can get him ready uh, at both the tackle position and the guard position on the left side of that offensive line. So a lot of things to get done. A lot of things the Dolphins want to accomplish in this, uh, in this preseason game. But it also starts here. All starts on Friday in the Meadowlands. The Dolphins will line up and get things going. Let's go ahead and get some questions here as we go on. Oh, here we go. Hey, glad you could make it, Johnny O. Always, you know, I can always count on you to I be here. Know. Never <laughs> qu never quite know when you're going to be here, but you're here. Oh, I got my Great glasses. to have you. I'm got ready your to go. Glasses, you, don't, you got caught in traffic, didn't you? Oh, I'm not even going to tell you what happened okay. on my All way right. here. All right, we'll talk it, about it. It wasn't traffic. We'll, it was good. All good. <laughs> we'll talk about it after. Hey, yeah. joining me, he's a five-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, uh, eight years with the Miami Dolphins, and, and one of the more unique guys, I think, that's ever played for the Dolphins, <laughs> as well as certainly one of the great linebackers ever to put the colors on for the Miami Dolphins. John, you think about the legacy of guys in this, of linebackers in this league, going back to Nick Bonacani, yeah. yourself, uh, you look at guys like Steve Toll, that were here, A.J. Dewey that played linebacker. Uh, you go on to yourself and, and Zach Thomas. Man, I tell you, the Dolphins, have, uh, they've had an abundance of, of inside linebackers that have played some, some pretty darn good, good football here over the years. We have. We have. I mean, I, when I think of Zach, who was uh, after me, I, yep. I had the opportunity to watch a lot of years of enjoyment, uh, even after I played, which yep. 
you know, when you, you become an alumni, you enjoy seeing players that have the passion that you hope to, to, to have brought into the, to the field. Uh, and then before me, you know, Nick Bonacani was my, yeah. uh, when I was young, I watched him. So it's a, uh, and in between, there's a lot of good players. You were a great player on the outside, well, you know. And up, and, you know I just we tried, loved it. I just you, to, you were there when I first came. Well, you, I, I was, I was gonna, a little I, puppy. So, so here's my here's my John Offerdahl story. <laughs> so this this was it, it. turned out to be my last training camp. The Dolphins that year, 1985, 86. Yeah, 86. 86. Um, Dolphins didn't have a first round draft choice. So they had the their first pick was a second second round draft choice fifty or you 52, 52, 54, 50, whatever, whatever it was. Whatever, yeah. So the Dolphins picked uh, out of Western Michigan, John Offerdahl, and you held out a little bit. You were a little greedy. You got a little greedy early well, on. I was the top pick, although yeah, I was yeah. in the second round. Yeah. The, you know that's what they were supposed so to do. So you want first round yeah, money? I'm gonna hold out. You're the first guy. Give me first true. round money. <laughs> I definitely got second so, round money. So 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 anyway, so John holds out. Meantime, we're getting ready for – so he finally signs his contract. We go up to Swanee, Georgia to practice against the uh, Atlanta Falcons up there. I had never met you. I think you got in maybe the night before, day before, maybe hit one practice or one, uh, one meeting. Yep. Then we're on the plane, yep. go up to Atlanta. And, and I'll never forget getting in the huddle – here comes John Offered. All no, no one knew him. No one, you know, no one had seen him. Comes in, hold out, like holds a, out. He's a money <laughs> no grubber. He wants all this stuff, <laughs> but he comes out, gets in the huddle. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Calls the defense and then starts pointing guys out. You've got that. You've got the short outside. You've got the deep outside. You've got the four. You know, you got the deep. Court. And I'm going, whoa, whoa! This guy hasn't been here for 15 minutes. He's telling everybody what to do. It was remarkable how you had grasp with that defense. <laughs> In such a short period of time. I'll never forget that first year. I mean, going up to Swanee, yep. right, up in uh, outside Atlanta, playing against Atlanta, uh, there was this really good guard. He was um, Freilich. Yeah, Remember Bill, Bill Freilich? Bill Freilich. Number Bill Freilich one pick. Played at Pitt with uh, Pitt. Danny, I believe. He did. Yep. He did. And yep. I think he was the number one pick a couple years yep. previous. And I'll, ne I'll never forget doing hamburger drills or Oklahoma drills yeah. or whatever, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you're sitting there and they put me up against Bill Freilich. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, I knew who he was, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And I had to go up against him and, and I, I kind of felt like I belonged in the NFL during yeah. that, the, during that practice because after you're going you play, after you played against him, after I hit him a couple times, you're a little nervous I, the first time you oh, let him, you saw him sitting there. I'm always nervous. Yeah, yeah, no, no. No. That's part of why, you know, I think look, I do look, have John, you, 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 you came from Western Michigan. I came from San Jose right. State. Very similar. Played in some of these all-star games, and I'll never forget, I played in the East-West Shrine game. Very similar to your thoughts. And I played against a guy that was, um, he was the Outland Trophy winner from, uh, from Wisconsin. Uh, what the heck was his name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But, I mean, he was, the, he was the guy. Right. I'm playing in little San Jose lineman. State. You know, and he's, you know, he's the Allen Trophy winner, best offensive lineman in the country. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. You know, I'm playing against him in this game. I go, oh, gee, this guy's going to gonna drive me into the ground. You know, after three or four plays, I go, this guy's no good, you know? <laughs> you I thought, hey, I think I, might be, I think I might be able to play in this thing, you know? Oh, you know, every high school football player goes through that. You know, yeah. maybe grade school, middle school, high and, school. And at some point where you're going from – from youth football to high right. school, high school to college, college to pros, right. you're and, gonna run into it. And every level, right. Yes, I mean, level, you right. get to a point where you think you're a pretty good high school player, but then at the yep. in the college, yep. you're intimidated the heck. Why? Because you're going up against the best offensive lineman, yep. the senior, and they're, they're all Lick. giving you a hard time. Dennis Lick was a guy's name. Yeah, yep. for you, yep. for it was. Yep. We never forget him. And yep. you know, everybody's hazing you, oh, come on, yep. drill them into the ground. And the next thing you know, they're they're walking away from yep. practice saying, damn, that guy's a player. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, so, no. and, you know Know, sometimes you're not, but you know. Fortunately, most of the times in my life, fortunately, you're on the side of the was a player, the, the not a player. Hey, you're listening to the Audible. I'm here with John Offred. I'll we'll take your questions here on Facebook throughout the show. We'll be with you until be with you until about five o'clock. Got a lot of stuff to get to. Let's go ahead and jump on the on the uh, questions. Uh, looking go, go looking along here, Andrew DeLuise, Do you think Miami will be able to handle going at least three and three in the division, John? This is something that the Dolphins have tried to get over. And you know, it's funny. They've 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 been had success against New England, at least winning one or two. It seems yeah. like it just about every year, but they can't get past the Buffalo Bills right yes. now. And it seems like they usually split with the uh, with the Jets. Yeah, no, I mean the the AFC East has always been a challenge. Great rivalries. Back when we played, uh, we usually dominated the, the yeah. Bills for a while, yeah. and then all of a sudden they came up with Kelly and. You know, the Patriots, I, it's just a lot of fun. For, for us to dominate and, and win and be more than 3-3 three and three yep. is a must for us to get past this 
you know, this averageness and malaise that we've been in. But, uh, you know, we've, we've had a couple disappointing years w- with our interconference play. <clears throat> well, speaking of John, you look at this team right now, um, 12 years, they've been the playoffs one time in 12 years, you know, and, and, and yeah. it's hard to believe that there are gener- there's a generation of kids out there that haven't seen this right. team, you know, be a playoff to caliber type team. And, uh, and, and I'm with you. They got to some way, somehow, these guys need to man up and find a way to be a team that gets in the playoffs this year. And, you know, forget excuses, forget about this coach didn't like me or that coach this. You know, it's, it's, it's to me, it's about those 53 guys. Yeah. Right? You know, when I came on the team, there were so many proven players yeah. that were well known in the league, uh, from the Killer Bees, right. Ukim, on the defensive side, to Marino, and the the great talent that we had on the offensive Dwight side. Why Stevenson over there? It was just like you knew you were going to win. Yeah. I remember when I got drafted, I'm thinking I'm going to be in the Super Bowl. There was a mindset that came with the team, and it came from Shula and yeah. his history that we were going to every year be vying for the Super Bowl, and that hasn't been around this team yeah. in the last ten years. And um, it. it What's sad is they have to gr- try really hard to get it. Where we, it was almost entitled to yeah. us. And there's an element when you have that yeah. that you don't appreciate it, but it brings, you know, it brings your A game to the uh, to the field every uh, Sunday. I think part of that, John, is is the legacy of this football team. When I came in, I came in 1976. You know, a couple years earlier than that, they were they went to three straight Super Bowls, yeah. won two, and went undefeated one year. And so that you know, we're still riding the crest of that. And you just kind of jumped on that wave and, right. and rode it through my career. And then you kind of did the same thing. Yep. Came into a team that had a tradition of winning, a coach that demanded winning, and you just kind of took that ride with right. them. And and now you've got a, a team that's trying to find that identity, trying to find that chemistry. And, and and hopefully this team, this group, and it's a it's a it's a good mix of young players, veteran players that have done this and, and been there, you know, done played at the highest level. They've got to find that chemistry together and just kind of turn this thing around. Because once yep. you turn it around a lot, sometimes it gets to be like a, I always believe this: winning breeds winning. Yeah, momentum. You win is one critical. year, and then the next year you come yeah. back just feeling that yourself. Yeah. Feeling yourself that you're just a different team, <laughs> different guy. In family, in life, in business, yep. if you can take some momentum and carry it, you know, to the next day, yep. and people start believing in you, uh, those are intangible. And it's not how fast you run and how big yep. you are, but it's those intangibles that really can be a snowball, a momentum towards victory. And you know, the, we haven't had that. With, with change, changes of coaches yep. and players, it's hard to grab onto that when you start getting a, a solid foundation and you build on yep. off it. Uh, you look forward to those moments. Well, and where... it, that's what I always talk about. I talk about like building a house. You know, yeah. if you if you if you, you you hire a builder to build a house for you, and he pours the concrete and puts the puts the the frame up, all of a sudden you nah, you know what? I don't like that. I'm gonna get a different builder. That guy comes in, takes the frame down, and puts it up again. Eh, and then you and, and so you awkward. never you never get going. And I think that's kind of what we've been through. But yeah. now I think the Dolphins feel like they've got, and I agree with they've got a guy in Adam Gase that brings a lot of youthful enthusiasm. He's a he's a bona fide coach. He's well thought of throughout the league as an offensive guy and certainly as a quarterback guy, right. which should help Ryan Tannehill. And, yes. and I think that he brings that feeling of, hey, this is going to be a winning guy. I know the players that I've spoken to, they can feel it. So hopefully yeah. this is the catalyst yes. to find that chemistry and to get you in that role. Youthful enthusiasm, momentum. Yep, I totally agree. So it's going to be interesting to see how he starts, even in preseason, but certainly in the season. Yep. You know, It's certainly very important for them to get a couple victories under their belt and yep. kind of get some momentum, right? Well, it'd be nice to get off to a quick start and then get that momentum, like you said, and, and ride it there. Hey, we're riding the momentum ah, here on the go. Audible. Kimbo Camper, John Offered all with us going to talk a little bagels we're going to talk a little grilling we're going to talk all that stuff (laughs) as we go on you can get your questions in on facebook here in fact i'm going to go ahead and move on here and and grab one uh all right so john here the season the dolphins open the season they got to travel to seattle to play uh, seattle then they come back then they head up to new england to play New, new england minus tom brady and cody klein asks will the extended west coast trip help or hurt the football team they've got another extended trip on the coast when they're going to go and play in San Diego and then in LA the following week so they'll probably stay, stay out there right. for for the week so they're going to they're going to know that west coast very well you played enough west coast game west coast games yeah. How much does it factor in? It didn't really factor into my I don't think so you know either. somewhere I heard that traveling east from the west coast affects more you more. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how true that is but I didn't really feel the effect 
I got so excited for game day yeah. that I don't care if I'm playing at three in the morning. Yeah, uh, I'm no, gonna be ready you. for that game. Well, that, that's why you know everyone's everyone's talking about this game that to open up the season in Seattle, and I'm thinking, look, if it's me, that's the best game to me. That's the best time to play that game. First game of the year. Yeah, First fresh. of all, you will have not have played a game since the last Thursday because yep. they end the preseason on Thursday. So you've got a little extra time there. The Dolphins may leave an extra day early to get out there and get acclimated. But look, on opening day, I don't care if you're playing in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, right. in, in San Francisco, in, in uh, Seattle. You're going to be fired up for opening day only because it's opening day. Yeah. And what better way to start the season than go all the way out to Seattle. They got the 12th man, and they're going to raise the flag up. Who knows going to be doing that? And they're going to be crazy in there. How about shutting those people up, yeah. sticking their foot where, your foot where it doesn't belong, and leaving out of that town with a win and just Man, getting like it. sleeping all the way back. That's it. <laughs> Smiling all the way back while you're sleeping. That's right. That's the scenario yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to promote that yep, scenario. You got to visualize it first. You got to see it. You got to feel it. You got to believe it, and then you got to make it happen. <laughs> That's right. And we can do it here behind the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go here, uh, Jessica Binkley. Uh, how do you think the guys will do this year, John? Uh, I know you haven't been around this team as much as I have, but you're you follow these guys, uh, new guys, obviously. They go out and they get they kind of get a gift with Laramie Tunzel, a guy that could have been the first pick in the draft, falls to them at 13. Yeah, They're tough. working him at the left guard, left tackle position. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Should do a, should do a lot to solve the ills of that offensive line. So, you know. I'd maybe, love to watch a, a season where Ryan had the offensive talent up front without injuries to allow him to go back there yeah. with time and make smart decisions, yeah. good throws. And be an effective quarterback. He's been an effective quarterback. Yes. I mean, my gosh, talk about precision and efficiency. But you know, he he hasn't been able to take control of games and and, and turn um, fourth quarter into yeah. victories. Well, I think that's it. I think I think Ryan's, you know, ha however long he's going to be here with the Dolphins, as is with most quarterback, he's going to be judged success whether it's success or failure based on what he does in the fourth quarter yeah, the, and we had the best i mean yeah, Marino yeah, yeah. is this really tough it's like dating a really beautiful girl yeah. and then everything else is measured up to that yeah, right yeah, and yeah. uh you know Marino was the best at that he he, he well he, look everybody that everybody that's played for the miami dolphins since 1972 <laughs> knows what it's like 17 is the girlfriend oh it right is the girlfriend. 17 is the girlfriend there and <laughs> you, you never quite you, got you that never quite got there <laughs> you, you may you may have kissed a cute one or two but you never quite got to 17 yeah. and 0 right well that's the, the that's the great thing about the miami dolphin franchise is it has that yep. uh, that unbelievable record to measure up against i like that hey john let's talk a little defense out here uh, uh they come in, uh, Chris Greer, uh, uh, the um, uh, general manager. Kind of, they go out and look at the players, player personnel. They look at this defensive front, um, and, and they go into this. They call it a, uh, this wide nine defense. Hey, you got to teach me a little bit about. Well, this. well, basically the wide nine defense because everyone's asking, everyone's asking about it. Basically, what it does, you spread. It's it's a it's a four man front, even front. Yep. Spread your defensive ends wide, the, the widest of the wide. In other words, if there's a tight end there, that defensive end, that strong side defensive end is outside because it gives them a lane. It gives them a lane, a better lane to the, the rush. to the quarterback. Okay. So to me, it's a more of a pass rush thing. But some of the questions that, that people think about or concern with is, does that widen the defensive tackles a little more and create a tougher, a, a tougher uh, job for those linebackers? to fill yeah. in run situations. So it's a really a 4-3. Yes. And then they take the two outside spread linebackers them, and spread them out, them out a little yes. bit more, yes. and then the ends are cheat, way out. And you're, I'm sure you'll cheat the yeah. linebackers a little bit one way or another and, and well, offset I mean, that. You really want a strong inner core if that's yep. the case because you are spreading your defense out. Yep. And if you're – I mean, I can see creating holes yep. for the run offense. But, you know, I, I like it. You're going to have to have more athletes, I think. Yep. Uh, not so um, – Stuck in a mold of like being a heavier linebacker, but you, you know the linebackers are going to have to be more well, able to cover. We had one of the uh, one of the questions here uh, earlier on was Kiko Alonso, the kid that they got from Philadelphia. Much like you, probably your same size. I mean, he's a uh, you know a he's faster. He's a six three six four. Well, I don't know about that. Six three six four. He's two. 45, yeah. 250, yeah. right about yeah. there, and, yeah. mo and moves well. And moves well. Athletic. You got to move well, yeah. Yep, here he's up here. I mean, he's a guy that, uh, that that fits that mold of what you're talking about, a linebacker that can go sideline to sideline, not a big lumbery middle linebacker that's got agility and, and, and the opportunity. Right. So a lot's going to go on – lot's going to land on his shoulders. You know, the, uh, the the frame of the linebacker, it's, it's continuing to be changed. When I played, it was – 
um, the bigger 250, 260 linebacker that could take the offensive lineman. Yeah. And, but it always changes. And nowadays with the, the pass offense, you have to be a yeah. covered linebacker, even on first down. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be interesting. I'm interested to learn new things. A 9-2, yeah. I'm scratching my head. Is that what you said, a 9-2? Wide 9, they call it. Wide 9. Yeah, so to, me, I, you know, to me, it's just, you know, you're wide the defensive ends out. Everybody's kind of I don't know what the except nine, for the I don't know. Safeties. I don't know what the 9 means, <laughs> but I know, I, know what it, I know what they're trying to do. Yeah. Hey, uh, Kevin uh, Hackinson asked, uh, asked, asked John, who was the best defensive lineman you played behind oh, with the That's a great fins. question. Yeah. Of course I'd say both. Bo, but you you were a defensive end. Yeah, and I wasn't there long. I went through your training <laughs> camp. In fact, I, I think you may have taken my job. I think you may have been the guy that, that I might have been the, league. the one that hit you from behind. Yeah, you yeah, head low. Yeah, may, may have been. That's right. <laughs> I kept my head low. My offensive, my defensive lineman didn't <laughs> like me too much. No, but look, you you know you play, I you know I tell you what I always you know as a linebacker when I played linebacker and they hated where you know that that defensive lineman would be standing there and holding somebody up and the backs come out. So you just drill the defensive lineman in the back because you you got to create. <laughs> you know, you got to a roadblock That's there, right? I would spear a lot of defensive linemen. Yeah. So the best defensive lineman I played against, uh, played with. That's a great question. Yep. Um, uh, let me think. Now you had Baumhauer when you first came in. Yeah, but Bob, but Bob didn't was beat. Bob was hurt. He Bob was, was my my roommate, my right. uh, locker yeah. mentor. Yeah, he he never played once because he was hurt. He was but hurt. He would teach me. Right. Uh, you know the future of the NFL. So. Our defense was changing a lot. Yep. Jeff Cross came in and was a really good defensive tackle yep. and, and rush end. Yep. Um, he was more of an end. He, he was more of a rush end, yep. yep. And then, Did you, you play know, Chuck Klingbile? Chuck was in there. Yeah. Um, there was a guy named Brian Socia. I remember Brian remember Socia. A little, little bit of a strange bird, Brian Socia. <laughs> They're all strange. Yeah. <laughs> Those yeah, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned Chuck Klingbile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I thought Brian... For a short time, had a lot of talent. Yes, um, and then you know we had the the John Bozas. He yeah. got hurt. Yeah, and it was sad because he had a lot of, you know, a lot of potential. So and, so you didn't catch Tim Bowens. I never. Caught you never Tim. caught Tim Bowens. Okay. You know one of the things I that I kind of would maybe, have loved yeah, is yeah. a Tim Bowens and a Daryl Gardner yeah. right in front. And well, you know, you talked to Zach and, and those guys about playing behind those guys, Timmy in particular, and, and certainly too. with Daryl Gardner. Yeah. They, they love those two because, yeah. I mean, you know how it is. It, in a 3-4 with those two guys up, with those guys up front, those tackles up front, yeah. and Daryl, you could move him down as a tackle and play yeah. tackle. It really created opportunities for those guys to make a lot of plays. Yeah, it did. It, it, one of the things I wish I never had the opportunity to play on was a 4-3 a yeah. where you, you have two defensive yes. tackles, two ends, yeah. and you really have one inside linebacker, one middle right. linebacker. And you and allow you the middle linebacker to really yeah. only fill one hole but play off of yeah. the big boys in front. So I always lined up in a 3-4 where there was a specific guard who was isolated yeah. on me. And yeah. it was just like a glory. I don't know if you remember, but, well, we, we had a coach, Coach George Hill, who was yeah. a defense coordinator, and he was a great coach, one of the best coaches I've had. had Bob Brzezinski's coach at Ohio State. He was. Yeah. Yeah. But he had us line up literally like two yards off of the offensive right. guard. I mean, I felt like a glorified yeah. D-tackle. Yeah. And, the you know, before the ball was snapped, I knew I was going to hit this 300 But, but that, was the, that was in the old days of, of filling the hole. <laughs> guard still, blocks down, yeah, right. fill the hole, right? right. That, right. That's what exactly. it was. Exactly. And it's funny how now, I mean, you, you look at now and – I've been thinking about this recently. You you look at football now, John, and the way it changed offensively, and then when it changes offensively, certainly it affects the defense and how you play your game. But you know, offense, you know, there's no more traps. There are no more no. toss sweeps. There's no more lead pull, isolates. Lead, lead, lead. No, there's none of that. Full now back. everything's you know stretch. Right. Yep. Look for the holes. You know, whether yeah. it's front side, back side, and and take them. It's funny how the how the the offensive line play has changed so dramatically. Yeah, it really has. And when I look at the offensive players, they're actually much bigger than they were when I played, but they are just they're spatial. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of they get in your way more. Yeah. And back when I played, they'd fire off that line yes, yeah. and literally try to put your, you know, put you on your butt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nowadays they just really are more positional. Yeah. Yep. Blockers and you know again when you have an open kind of offense yeah. where a running back can find their hole yeah. they can be very. You, you watch at some point someone's going to come back and start throwing traps and isos and those things and, it always and it's going to take a while for them to figure <laughs> out. Right. Hey, you're uh, you're watching the uh, you're watching the audible here, Kimbo Camper, John Offord, all with you here. Let's uh, go to Facebook. Any questions you have, go ahead and bring them in on Facebook and we'll get through them on the program. Thomas James, what is that delicious delicious bacon at Offord Alls? Now let me let me get it right. Oh, Offerdalls Offerdalls a cafe grill now. Right, right. Well, I'm gonna throw you a loop. 
we're opening up a reimage store that is going to be called Offer Dolls Off the Grill. Nice. How about that? Great. So uh, we're going more and more towards the grill. We grill breakfast, yep. lunch, and dinner off the grill. So we have this bacon. And he's trying to find the yeah, recipe yeah, yeah. from me. I got to be careful. Oh, oh so you, you get the bacon, then you do something to the bacon. Oh, we do something to the bacon. Okay. Yeah, we get a thick slab of bacon, and then we put some chipotle mm. uh, and uh, some brown sugar yeah. in there, and, yeah. and we yeah. oven it up a little bit. Oh, it's good. So that's a secret, but it goes on pretty much any item, and, yeah. and it works. So, oh, sure. you know, we're... You bacon, you come on, man. Eat. We're in the restaurant <laughs> business. It's good to be with you. If there's something bro. wrong with it, throw throw bacon on there. <laughs> Ice cream and bacon. Hey, let us, since, since we kind of got off football, and we'll get back to football here in a little bit. Let, let's talk a little bit, with John. H how many people still? Hey, love your bagel store. Yeah, how I would say ninety percent of them yeah. say that. Ninety yeah. percent of people still don't know that you've not. You you, you do have bagels, but yeah. you're not you. So the so yeah. the so the the. The way it went this way, you started playing with the Dolphins, you, you opened a bagel shop. Your family was in, was yeah. baking back in... Uh, they were in, in the equipment sales business. In equipment sales. So you yeah. kind of got into the... So anyway, you come in here, you open a bagel store, offered all those bagels. They're great. Yep. Everyone loves them. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> excuse me, corporation comes in. They're looking to go nationwide. They buy three chains, yeah. uh, East Coast, Midwest, and West, yeah. and create... Uh, Einstein. Einstein bagels, and you were one of the uh, one of those three Founding companies that they partners. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That was uh, crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. So I was in 1990, right in the middle of my football career. My wife and I got married, and we started uh, that idea, that yeah. business. Yeah. We opened up our first store out in Western Florida, and we just we had the right product yep. at the right time with the right service, and it flew. And my wife worked so hard during yep. those early years. But, um, you know, by the time I retired from football in 93, um, it was a really interesting time also because people were bidding on my business. Yeah. Wayne Huizinga Jr., or Sr., right. Sr., was bidding on my business. He was my owner. Right. And he right. was bidding on our right. business. Right. And I was like, oh, that's really strange. Yeah. Um, we actually sold our business to Boston Market. And, um, you know, from that point on, it was kind of out of our hands. Yeah. But it was uh, just an unbelievable period of time for me. One that I loved from a football standpoint, and that certainly branded me yeah. because they called me sure. the Bagel Man from you know the Miami Dolphins, and it was a, a fun time to be in now the let game. Let me ask you this: Somebody asked me this recently, within the last couple of days, and it probably fits you too. He said, uh, he asked me, he says, you know, you got kind of an unusual name. Did that help you? I said, yeah, it helped me. I said, because it sticks out. It's, right. it's you know, first Kim and then Bo Camper offered all the same way. You know, you hear that name, you don't hear it all the time. So it kind of it right. gets emblazoned in there if you've been yep. around long enough, right? It, I think it does. I think it, it rolls off the tongue like your, yeah. your last name. Yeah. And once said, you know, it kind of sticks to the product. And, you know, for us, it stuck so much to the bagel. Right. Now that we're into the grill side of it, it's a lot of, a lot of work to yeah. rebrand yourself. But, um, you know, it's certainly a name that I think has a lot of, um, value to yes. it, like yours, yes. and, and you know your reputation's behind that, and we we take that very seriously. No, no doubt about it. In yeah. fact, here, <clears throat> Joe B Donuts. I think that's a fake name, Joe B, but that's all right. <laughs> it's a, he asked a good, pretty good question, though. Have you done better financially from football or after football? In other words, have you done sure. better in business than uh, than your football career? Sure. Well, that's a great I mean, obviously question from a financial standpoint. Yeah. Um, I have a great story that uh, after three years of making the Pro Bowl, right. um, I was the 28th paid player on our Miami Dolphins 28th team. 28th highest paid player. You were number 28, 28 in the pecking order, yes. With yes. one being Marino. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> yes. And that was after three years. Could you see Danny from way up, <laughs> where you were sitting? Could you see him way up there in the, uh, in the financial strata? Yeah, he was up there, man. He was <laughs> way above me. But um, so I was a very kind of like, uh, at that time and I had to hold out again yeah. for eight regular season games before yep. I came back and the following year Wayne Huizinga made me the highest paid linebacker right. in, in the league for like a week before somebody else got yep. it but um, you know so uh, you had to work hard to get the value uh, yep. back then and just like you do in, in a job. So to answer the specific question, we were fortunate enough to hit the right thing at the right yep. time where our restaurant business just did very, very well. Yep. Um, but every day, uh, 
the ball's kicked off. It's a challenge every it's day. You, every you, you, day. You start from zero to zero. Your zero, next zero customer can you know literally take you down, yeah. just like your opponent across the field. And our customers aren't our opponents, yeah, but we got to treat them right. So I love what I love about I think football prepared me for afterlife is that Shula was so, such a you know he yeah. was a disciplinarian. He, he focused on the details. We did the routines over and over, yeah. sometimes to ad nauseum. Yeah. But in life, you have to create an environment and processes and systems so that people can get connected and yeah. I, you know and know their purpose in life and execute excellently if yeah. they don't execute they're going to have a bad customer experience a bad football game yeah you know i I've, I've told people this a lot and when i when i talk to groups or whatever and i always tell them i say you know what professional football for me or i think in general if used properly may be the greatest platform to send you into Absolutely. that next level Absolutely. of whatever you can do, whether it's broadcasting, whether it's business, whether you, uh, you know, wh whatever you choose to get in after football, boy, if you don't take advantage of that springboard, I, I think you just missed a yeah. missed a great opportunity. I love it. I, I totally agree with you, Kim, because if you can glean what you learned yeah. from Don Shula for eight years, yeah. you are a magic in the marketplace. You know, yeah. if you just apply that into whatever you yeah. do. And and then when you're the boss or you're the owner, you have the ability based on your hard work and your expertise to do magical yeah. things, you know, not only for your family, but for your customers and for your community. And so I, I feel fortunate that a lot of us yeah. who were coached by Shula have been able to go yep. on. Dick, you know, there's just... You could go uh, on. Almost, on yeah, on, I don't yeah. even want to start because some of us are in the restaurant, but there's yeah. a lot of other successful players have, who have stayed in the area and made South Florida a better place to live. No doubt about it. John, you made a great day today. A pleasure having you here with us, and hopefully we can have you on again. It's a short time. 30 minutes just flies yeah. by when just you're flies. in here, man. I just... I get so pumped up when I'm around yeah. the football field. Yeah, no, it's yeah. great. No, you I just, just lose it a little. I love bit. it. Yeah, well, well, let me tell you what up. I do. The you know I do the radio, the sideline on the radio, and I and I, you know, I respect game day. Yeah. You know, I respect game day for these guys. Right. I stay out of their way. Yeah. I don't. It's I don't. Serious. I don't converse with them because yeah. I know they get in your own. Everyone's got their own space. Right. I stay out of you their got space. Their own way of doing but things. I stay on the sideline there, and the boy, I'm just you know, I, I'm into it. You know, yeah, I. It is. You know, there's a couple of times guy running by, I felt like you know sticking the leg out and. <laughs> yeah. I am saving time. one for the team, you know. <laughs> we save the team here a little bit. Just Give pick up some of that grass, put it in your pocket, oh, well, smell well, it. I love that. Now there's very little real grass. But every once in a while, you want to get in the game, don't you? Uh, yeah, every you now and then, you want to throw the bone yeah, on somebody yeah. or whatever. But tempting for a moment. John, it's a pleasure. Thanks for being with us on the Audible today. Thanks, Cam. Thank Great you guys here. for watching the Audible. We'll be back on Friday. Friday though, we'll be live from. The Meadowlands, MetLife Stadium. We're going to do it on the road. We're taking the Audible on the road. Hope to see you there Friday at 4.30. Have a great day. We'll see you then.